we didn't know that the president was going to increase the cabinet so substantially and give the ANC so much more than proportionally, proportionally was their due. Well, so you didn't, you didn't know about the extension of, of cabinet? We didn't know so about the, the first size time, of the cabinet. The first no. time that you found out about it was when the rest of the country had heard of it. Yes. For what, what we didn't know, what we did know was which... So what many have called a bloated cabinet, a compromised cabinet, or a dodgy cabinet by the ANC, Helen Zille in this video is actually giving some behind the scenes events that actually took place in the maneuvers by the ANC in coming up with the minister cabinet positions that actually have formed the cabinet of the government of national unity right now in South Africa. Let's listen to how Helen Zille explains this and I'll be back with some really interesting analysis by Herman Mashaba in how he blasts the ANC for a bloated cabinet that would cause more pain on the taxpayers of South Africa. Yeah, and what's the interpretation around um, Clause 19? Is there common understanding, do you believe, amongst the members of the GNU, all 11 partners? Well, the words are very clear, so I don't think there should be any confusion. Yeah, there was a confusion, for instance, around Section um, 24. Uh, so so with, 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 with the Section 19, you believe there's common cause and understanding about what it means. What does 60% in the National Assembly mean? Well, if you don't want to stick to an agreement, you'll always be confused about the wording, won't you? <laughs> who, 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 who doesn't want to stick to the agreement? Well, you've seen what's happened. We in the DA have honoured every step of the agreement we made with the ANC. Look at Clause 16. Look at Clause 24. I mean, proportionality is out the window. It doesn't exist. And we spent a lot of time talking about it. Proportional dilution is out of the window. Clause 24, out of the window. So, you know, you've got to really understand that if people don't want to stick by the agreement, they'll find a way of not understanding its clauses. So considering that uh, proportionality, according to your interpretation, is out of the window, um, but, this, but the deal still remains in place? Yes, the deal does remain in place because we need to move forward now. We need to take the portfolios we've got. You know, South Africans are very, very sensitive. When you move into a tough negotiating space and you take a clear position based on an agreement that has already been reached, Everybody says, oh, no, that's not fair. Oh, be nice. All of that sort of thing. You know, these things exist for a reason. An agreement exists for a reason. That is why we negotiated a statement of intent. And that is why we intended to implement the statement of intent. Is, 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 that, it a, is, is that a compromise on your end, do you believe? I suppose everybody had to compromise a bit. But um, we didn't know that the president was going to increase the cabinet so substantially and give the ANC so much more than proportionally, proportionally was their due. Well, so you didn't, you didn't know about the extension of, of cabinet? We didn't know so about the, the first size time, of the cabinet. The no. first time that you found out about it was when the rest of the country had heard of it. Yes. For what, what, we did know, what we did know was which portfolios we were getting and which deputy ministers we were getting. That we did know. But for the rest, we didn't have any information. So, so did you know that, for instance, agriculture will be delinked from land reform? Because John yes, Stien has... Obviously, yes. And we knew about so, our so, portfolios so, and what they included. Yeah, but does that not mean that that then infers that there would be an extension or expansion of cabinet? Agriculture used to be agriculture and land reform. Now it's just agriculture and land reform has been delinked from that. So well, meaning that you may infer that from one example. You may infer that from one example. But the bottom line is, let me just quickly kill this call. Sure. The bottom line is that um, we don't know how many they're going to be. And we don't know that they're going to be an expansion. You might have contraction of other departments and the fusion of other departments. You can't sit there and deduce from the structuring of one department that the cabinet is going to increase in size. Brilliant. What do you guys think? Um, I think it's uh, straight to the point. She actually nailed it there, especially this concept of sufficient consensus. I always suspected that that would, um, you know, kind of like be a major problem. That would be a major meeting point, a problem with the meeting point of these parties on how to go forward with certain policies. And 
the fact that um, you know the GN would have to reach a 60% uh, consensus by most of the parties that actually make up uh, you know uh, uh, that 60% of the of the cabinet and how would it be kind of like interpreted by the other parties and what actually would then be the objective of the goal or the goals or the you know functions of these other smaller parties within the GNU some would uh, you know uh, eventually stay mute and just keep watching but then confirm and you know continuously being regarded as part of the government i think it's a really tricky uh, one but it's a i think it's a concept that actually worked during the Codessa negotiations i'll be doing some research on that as well the term sufficient consensus and how that could work you know for the government of national unity um, but anyway uh in this video i thought to go through two articles uh, written by uh herman mashaba blasting the anc for what has been called a bloated cabinet that would really hurt uh, South Africa's taxpayers, um, you know, in, in this government of national unity. So it's, um, yeah, it actually says that, you know, Action Masaba's, uh, Action Essays Mashaba slams President Ramaphosa's uh, bloated cabinet in that he actually says that um, Haman Mashaba is actually concerned uh, about the newly organized, uh, the newly announced cabinet, which was bloated and that it will cost uh, taxpayers uh, 183 million rand in salaries, okay? And it also argues that President Cyril Maposa argued on Sunday, um, on Sunday evening, uh, that, you know, there will be an announcement for, or there will be the, South Africa will have to work with GNU, uh, with 32 ministers and 45 deputy ministers. And Ramaphosa has also said that some of the portfolios have actually been separated uh, in an effort to have a sole focus um, on issues. So like the news reporter in the video argues, so uh, Ministry of Agriculture, I think it used to be Ministry of Agriculture and Land Reforms, but now they've been separated so that probably, for example, John Stain using could focus more on agriculture and land reform, you know, the Minister of Land Reform would uh, actually focus more on that. Um, he also argues that, you know, that taxpayers would have to foot the bill for this larger cabinet, meaning that, you know, uh, Mashaba said in, in this decision to have this kind of like larger cabinet would disadvantage the taxpayers in South Africa, who would have to now pay, you know, 2.6 million uh, rand in salaries for each minister and also 2.2 million rand for each deputy minister per year. Arguing that, you know, on top of this, taxpayers will cover over 500 million uh, for the VIP protection and security, and over 390 million rand for support staffing, you see. And it also says that these staggering figures do not even account for the additional costs associated with luxury residences afforded to the ministers and the deputy ministers. So that's according to Herman Mashaba. He also says that, you know, that being the opposition of the government of national unity, Herman Mashaba also said that the bloated cabinet contradicted Ramaphosa's commitment to reduce the size of the cabinet during the 2018 State of the Nation address. And that he, Mashaba also added that some of the returning and reshuffled national executive members did not deserve to be in the cabinet under the seventh administration. So this is according to Action SA, um, you know, Action SA's critique of the new cabinet. He argues that some of these um, cabinet members who do not deserve to be, um, I think, partake in this cabinet in the seventh administration include the former basic education minister, Angie Moshega, who now serves as a minister of defense and military veterans. He argues that Moshega actually had failed to improve basic education in the country and wonders why she had to now be part of the ministry again. He also argues that he was also on unhappy with how Dr. Blade and Simande handled the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, uh, you know, the scandal that had to, that actually engulfed that National Student Financial Aid Scheme, and that Mashaba actually now says that he, um, you know, um, Mashaba said this should have deprived Nzemande of an opportunity to serve in the national executive. Nzemande was now reinstated in a reduced cabinet portfolio and Nizamande will now only be responsible for science, technology, and innovation portfolio, which means that he will no longer oversee the higher education component, which was included in his previous manifesto. So this is Mashaba blasting most of the cabinets. It seems that, you know, the ANC reshuffled most of his previous uh, cabinet ministers to kind of like fit in some new roles. But, you know, this has actually um, stepped on some of the toes of uh, some of the critics, political analysts. Uh, in South Africa. Mashaba also said that the GNU cabinet made a bad impression and that he however said that the cabinet would be held accountable for the direction the country would take. And speaking also at the union building in Pretoria, 
uh, Ramaphosa defended the bloated cabinet in the sixth democratic administration. He argued, Ramaphosa now speaking, saying that we indicated our intention to reduce the number of portfolios in the national executive. However, due to the need to ensure that the national executive is all inclusive of all parties to the government of national unity, this had not been possible. So in other words, the need for a government of national unity, this hunger for inclusiveness and unity in South Africa had actually, according to President Ramaphosa, um, you know, culminated in the uh, bloatedness so to speak, of the cabinet in order to encapsulate and inculcate that philosophy and, um, you know, um, metaphor of unity and inclusiveness in South Africa's governance. It also says that Ramaphosa said that all parties involved have committed to promoting accountable and transparent governance, evidence-based policy and decision-making, and that these parties actually include the ANC, the Patriotic Alliance, IFP, the Good Party, the Pan-African Congress of Azania, the Freedom Front Plus, Unity, United Democratic Movement by uh, Bantu Olumisa, Al Jama, Rise in Zanzi, and the United Africa Transformation. So these are the parties that make up the government. It argues Ramaphosa still speaking says that the incoming government would prioritize rapid, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth and also the creation of a more just society by tackling poverty and inequality. So um, that's where um, the critique for the government of national unity is at the moment. Uh, the critique for the bloated cabinet, you see, um, uh, we see that here Ramaphosa argues that one of the reasons for the bloating is actually in order to be able to promote that whole agenda of inclusiveness and unity and not allow anyone, especially those on the fringes, left behind. But now it's more of an inclusive government and that has actually led to the expanded cabinet. But Hamid Mashaba argues that, you know, that would cost the taxpayers of South Africa, the taxpayers which actually already do not have jobs and, you know, are unable to even pay, support themselves, but they now have to be squeezed more in order to be able to support um, the salaries of these new cabinet ministers that have actually been sworn in, uh, you know, in South Africa in the government of national unity. So it's a really tricky, tricky one. I really don't have much to say, but I actually thought that it would be really interesting to hear from Helen Zile on, you know, the behind the scenes uh, maneuverings by the ANC that had gone through, that had actually gone down in order to achieve or come arrive at this government of national unity cabinet that South Africa has to work with for the next uh, four or five years. But anyway, this is um, where I will stop at this moment for this video. What do you guys think about her speech here? Share your thoughts in the comments.